The autistic and ADHD mind prioritises what's important to us, not what's important for us. It is for this reason we stick with activities that have relevance and meaning to us, regardless of whether or not these activities are conducive to success or good health. It isn't that we don't understand or accept the objective importance of life's necessities, it's that they have not yet been engulfed into our own personal subjective sphere of importance. And that's the trick. That which is important for us must somehow be rendered that which is important to us. To learn to read or write as standalone activities makes no sense out of context. A reading or writing lesson is so not autistic friendly it's not even funny. The question is not, how do I get my child to brush their teeth? The question is, first and foremost, what is my child's primary focus? The primary focus is the special interest, that which is important to the child. Teeth brushing, on the other hand, is that which is important for the child. Even though that which is important for the child has not yet been engulfed into the autistic person's sphere of importance, it can be, by presenting it not as a primary focus, but as a secondary focus. Parents and teachers often make the mistake of presenting a secondary focus as a primary focus. As autistic people, we already have our primary focuses, thank you very much. So long as you stress the importance of the thing you want us to do, we reject it time and again. Why would I take on a new primary focus when the one I currently have serves me well? The secondary focus has to make sense in the wider context of our life. Say I'm an autistic person with a love for people reciting poems to me. If someone shows me how reading can be utilised as a tool with which I can access all the poetry I wish to consume, it relegates the demand status of reading. Reading now makes sense in context. Reading, in this case, becomes a secondary focus to my primary focus, poetry. I'm not necessarily of the idea that demand detoxes are always necessary. Instead, why not convert the demand into a stepping stone? What does the demand lead to? Nothing. Is the destination inherent in the demand itself? I'm not doing it then. This indicates a stairwell into the abyss. Too often we regard the demand as the end goal. It is far better to regard the demand as a means to the goal of the PDA person's own choosing. It's not about taking medication, important for me. It's not even about how I'll feel upon taking the medication. It's about how taking the medication will help me to feel well enough for not just the thing I want to do, but the thing I'm meant to do, my default state, my raison d'être, that which is important to me. I cannot do something because I have to. I cannot do something because I want to. I do something because I'm meant to. And as I've said before, I never actually do. I become. The trick is to convert the demand into a stepping stone, rendering that which is important for us what's important to us through presenting or approaching the demand not as a primary focus, we already have that, not as an end goal, but as a means, as the secondary focus. Demands don't make sense as standalone activities. They must be integrated into the wider context of our life. Only then can they, be, can they be overcome.